How would you kind of assess how things have gone for you the first, you know, first half of the season? Now? Um, it's tough to say. Kind of up and down. I'd say I think um, the pit game went really well for me personally, and then obviously I went really well as well. Um, so just really looking to build off of uh, what I did last weekend in Iowa City and hopefully carry that on to the second half of the season. Why did you think it went well for you, Blake? Like, what, did, did anything change for you, or is it just getting in a groove? Um, honestly, that was probably the most confident and relaxed I've been before any game I've played. Um, I took a long look at scripture before the game, actually. Um, I have someone back home who sends me a, a Bible study before every game, okay. and I really looked at that. Um, and then we have Bible study on, on Friday nights as well um, at the hotel. So um, part of that message and part of the message from the, from the um, Bible study I got sent um, kind of hit home with me and kind of calmed me down and relaxed me. So um, looking to kind of do that for the rest of the season as well. Is that something like new uh, or that you like just did for this game and started? Or? Yeah, it's something I've been doing for a while. Um, as I said, they, she sent me it every single week, but I really kind of sat down with myself. I have a lot of time in the hotel for a night game, especially on the road, so um, not a lot going on, not a lot of family around, so kind of got to take time for myself and kind of reflect on, on what I've been doing and what I can can do in the future, so um, I think that was really impactful and kind of impacted my performance as well. What happened when you got bumped up um, out there? Was there, a, was there a chance that you weren't going to come back in? No, I, there's never a chance of that. Um, I've worked too hard to um, get to this point and kind of sit on the sidelines and um, watch my team suffer because of it. So um, anything that ever happens to me, um, you won't notice it on the field. And I think I did a good job of bouncing back after that, um, kind of keeping my confidence and everything. And, and, uh, going out there in the second half and help my team uh, be successful. Could you tell us what happened? Because it looked like some one Just got rolled guys, up on. Yeah. Um, can't really get anything specific, but right. um, I've been practicing all week. I'm good to go for Saturday and um, hopefully can, can build off what I did in Iowa. Like, obviously, a lot of sports is about mentality and confidence and stuff like that. How much for a specialist where you do the same specific job over and over again, how much is, is that a part of you know what you're talking about? And, and then on the flip side, how do you avoid things that get you out of that space? You talk about getting into it. How do you yeah. avoid things that get out of that space? Obviously, I think uh, as a specialist, it's probably the most important thing, mental toughness. Um, be able to have the mentality to go out there and maybe not have your best kick the last kick and have to do it um, and kind of repeat that uh, over and over again. Um, it's, it's a hard trap to fall into and, and kind of get overconfident and then you don't work as hard, um, which I think happened to me last year. I think I said that to you guys late in season last year so um, we do a lot of mental training and stuff like that uh, a lot of confidence we we kind of try to feed off of each other um, just in the group and then um, kind of relate that to the team as well so confidence is a huge thing for us uh, kicker and punter long snapper the same way um, I think as a team right now we're, we're ultra confident I think that's really that's being shown on the field and hopefully we can keep that going the confidence and training your mind, I mean, is that stuff you guys are doing with Carl or is that stuff that's like Yeah, Carl speaks to us multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. um, he really gives us valuable insight on what, where our heads should be at um, going into a game during the practice week, um, how we can really develop our mind and our body um, to kind of um, mesh together on game day, um, which is really what you're trying to do. You're trying to peak during the game. Um, so practice is obviously a big, a, a big part of that, but um, kind of building up towards the game time and then peaking at game time is really essential for us. How do you feel like maybe you've evolved from that mental side of things for the last four years? Yeah, I think definitely just having the confidence doing it over and over again, being in, I mean, going to Iowa for a second time was huge. Um, just being able to experience that atmosphere before. Obviously, we have a, a, a young team based on our roster, but um, we got some experience in that, in our all of our rooms back there, so. Um, just being able to experience that uh, a couple of us for the second time was huge and kind of being aware of what that was going to be like. I'm not sure we had the same experience um, in 2017. I don't think we've been back um, for a while. So just having the familiarity, being around, um, and just kind of being able to step up as a leader and, and feed off other guys has just been huge. Blake, like, aside from being 6-0, why is the buy-in so strong this year in this locker room based on everything we've heard? Yeah, I think everyone's really on the same page this year. Um, people have really stepped up and accepted the role they're in. 
not, not necessarily being happy with that role, but um, if you're the scout team center, you're doing that, that job to the best of your ability. Um, if you're the starting kicker, you're doing that job to the best of your ability. I think it's really, um, people are really compartment, compartmentalizing what they're doing. Um, and then our chemistry has been is the best it's been in a long time. Uh, I can't remember a time where um, so many people in the locker room are interacting with different groups. Um, the guys that are redshirt freshmen are interacting with the, the seniors in the middle of the locker room. Like it's, it's really amazing how um, stuff has evolved here in the last four years um, in terms of our locker room. So really proud of our leadership and our guys for kind of spearheading that. And, um, that's that's kind of the future of this program. Is any of that attributed to this staff, specifically recruiting personalities as well as athletes? Yeah, it's important to not just recruit talent. It's about recruiting the team. Um, and I think we recruit the right kind of guys um, that really get it from like a, an education perspective, an athletic perspective, and kind of a social perspective as well. So um, just recruiting the right guys that can come together in meshes as a unit. Um, because when you have guys playing, um, not connected with one another. Um, you can have the best players in the world, but you won't win any games doing that. Those so, Iowa fans are kind of right on top of you. Were there any comments about the haircut? <laughs> yeah, I can't say them in this setting, but um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they get after it pretty good. I think it, it's it's a really cool back and forth. Um, there's not so much being sent back to the stands as much as we're taking it, but um, that's honestly a lot of fuel for our guys. I mean, we hear it, obviously. Um, they're pretty close. and. They're not saying the nicest things, so um, especially when our defense, we're up 11 points in the fourth quarter and our defense is going out there to kind of put the game away, um, that just serves as more fuel um, than the opposite. So um, really cool, really cool experience in Iowa. Um, kind of sad I won't go back, but um, we've had success there in the last two years, two, two trips back. So um, really proud of how we played this weekend. Right. Thank you, Mark. Speaking of hair, how has Jordan Stout kind of settled into the team for the first half of the year? And do you still believe you're the you're the flow king of the uh, <laughs> of the two flow bros there? Um, yeah. So the, the sign's pretty cool. The flow bro sign. Yeah. Uh, I think I've said this before. He kind of just let his hair grow. I actually had to do something right. to it, not to manipulate right. it, which yeah. takes takes some confidence and. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's really fit in. He fit in from the first minute he stepped on campus. He has an electric personality. He's probably one of the nicest guys on the team. Um, a lot of people don't know that. He's very personal with everyone. And, and obviously, you've seen what he's done uh, for our kickoff unit. And our, our touchback percentage is way up this year, uh, which really eliminates a lot of the good returns we face, which is huge for us. So he's been an essential component to what we've done on special teams so far. And uh, hopefully, he can continue. I know he can. So. That'll be huge going into the second half. What can you remember from your first whiteout experience? And, and have you tried to, you know, prep some of the guys maybe have Yeah, that was the first really bad weather game I played in. That was the Ohio State game, I believe, 2016. Um, obviously, the thing I remember about that game is the ball being snapped over my head, and I kind of panicked and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, I, that that atmosphere was electric. I think nothing in the in the the country compares to a wideout. Um, I think Jordan told me a couple days ago that he still hasn't heard anything louder than Virginia Tech, and I think he's going to be proven wrong this weekend. So um, I think Coach is talking about trying to pack 112,000 in, and I think that's that's probably a low ball number. So yeah, so we're looking forward to it. I was over in the stadium today. We kick over there on Wednesdays, and there there was extra stands in there I hadn't noticed before. So uh, so it should be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, especially as the last one. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, Blake. Thank you, Blake.